Michelle? Daniel. OG, OG Rose. Rose. And everyone needs to know about this garlic ranch. It is so good from Hidden Valley. It's kind of like, <laughs> like the Papa John's dipping sauce. Oh my gosh. Like that garlicky butter one. Is this new item they had? So we're doing like Consumer Report now, yeah, apparently. Yeah, that's what we're doing now. This is incredible. Uh, <laughs> so garlic and ranch apparently make the Papa John's dipping sauce. Pretty incredible stuff. <laughs> Um, but other than Consumer Report, we were talking about responsibility, response, and stuff like that. Yeah. I just always think it's an, an interesting thing where, you know, I remember, uh, I believe I heard Owen talking about this, um, uh, Owen, at, Owen at the, at the Aragon. Oh yeah. Good Argonon. old Raymond. Raymond. Oh. And, and he was talking about, uh, really Owen, he like made some comment about how really the only thing that has really advanced a lot and I guess it is a really old point that he was just like expanding upon is is the speed of of tech of uh, communication sorry the speed of, of communication is one of the main like your printers haven't gotten like vastly different in 20 years probably mm -hmm. or maybe 10 years but like in 10 years I mean communication has changed drastically right mm -hmm. drastically um, and yeah we're in the same time range right 10 or 20 years mm -hmm. anyways the point of the matter is we have a lot of Ability. We have a lot of ability, or sorry, we have a greater ability today to respond, right? To respond to, to a lot of different messaging things. We have a lot, we have a greater capacity, or I don't know, I don't know if it's a capacity really, but we have a, more opportunities to like have feel this sense of responding to the news and all of the news outlets and stuff like that. Right. So I guess what I mean to say is it's interesting to me because I, I think the word play is interesting about response and responsibility mm. or just the fact that, you know, responsibility is really going to be tied to many things, but I do, I'm trying to, I think it's interesting to think about medium technologies and how does that impact our relationship with responsibility because like in a in an age where you have all of this this opportunity to respond and it's it makes you feel like you are being responsible and for many people like that is a part of like their jobs or like maintaining their friendships right. to respond to messages I mean right. I'm not saying that's anything wrong with that I'm just saying that I wonder what this does on almost like a I don't know like a on the unconscious if it's working on us in certain ways to make us feel like we are very responsible because we're constantly responding mm -hmm. or we feel like we're constantly responding mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and 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 yet is that really responsibility is that really yeah. is that even ability I mean in a way it is I mean you have to do something yeah. <laughs> but it's also it requires like liter uh, little physical and, and energetic capacities but it's uh, there can be a huge mental component like where this there, there it can cost one a lot uh, in terms of their mental energy simply because of the overwhelm or the sense of feeling bad or the guilt of not getting back to people or like the sense of I've got all these avenues of messaging and how am I going to keep up with all of that um, or just needing to for your job yeah. like you literally yeah. have to and yeah, so yeah. anyway I just think this is interesting because we used to live in a time where maybe it was like your responsibilities were tied a bit more to the physical exertion and like mm. and sort of more local local like localized relationships mm. and how you would respond to like actually somebody you're talking to and seeing their facial expressions right whereas today the response is is a lot more distant and immediate but also you don't know the full context of what people are in right when they receive it um all, all of that and also the weird it's weird it's weird because in some ways this what i think is ultimately possibly doing is maybe making us feel like we are very we are responsible or like we have this responsibility but we're not maybe we're, we are in some ways not cultivating responsibility at the same time right. at the same time we do i feel like there's a way in which psychologically we feel more responsible hmm. for stuff that maybe we used to not like of course you're not going to be liable to be responsible for something happening halfway across the world you're not even there right how could you possibly yeah. be responsible yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. your fault like yeah. I'm not saying that it doesn't. It's not sad or horrible, or maybe something you need to like. You know, you feel you give your life to going over sure, and changing sure, that. Sure. Maybe you have a mission to do that, or like a, you feel called to do that, or something. Hmm. 
but it's just weird because today there's like I think there's something interesting about something happening on the psychological level of responsibility and then how in the past there was less of that kind of existential responsibility but there was more there were greater localized from like maybe familial or relational like communal types of responsibility that was different so no, it's a lot there but no yeah. no I, I think it's very interesting on kind of almost like uh, Nietzschean transvaluation or just a change of values where responsibility now equals responding to messages, information, the news, and what, the news, you know, and it does suggest a way in which the information technology uses values to get you to use it, right? Like there's always the everyone kind of talks about the dopamine. Oh yeah, they're addictive. The screens are addictive. That's yeah, that's true. You know, Jonathan Haidt has that book now, The Anxious Generation. But it's funny to think that there's also a kind of moral incentive as well. Well, you want to be responsible, so you're gonna like respond to what's happening in the world or respond to your messages. And so that's an interesting way that the information technology has turned a certain value in its favor. Um, you know, in Second Thoughts, we talk about the grand technology paper, how you are, you know, you're constantly in the situation where you're aware of bad things happening in the world, but then not really given a clear idea of what you're supposed to do with it. It's just right. probability that there's always going to be something bad in the world, and so you're just kind of paralyzed. Yeah. And that, that leads to perhaps a disempowered people, which then has to accept the power structure at play. You know, there's different possibilities there. It's kind of a mixture of Camus and Dostoevsky in that movie Eye in the Sky that's so interesting with drones. Mm -hmm. um, but I like this idea on, you know, and yeah, Owen Owen and Joshua's class and Paul Virilio was just very masterful. And the way that that they combine together information technologies with military strategy. And I definitely think military strategy, like the, the great Dr. Simpkin talks about, is really um, a very important area for philosophers and thinking to charter. I sometimes think military thinking doesn't get enough of attention. You know, there's a lot of like emphasis. I was thinking about this today on emphasis on getting back to the body, you know, getting back to the grounded. And we talk all the time about David Hume, common life, concrete, and different things. And so that's all true. It's interesting, though, to think about the difference about getting back to the body and philosophy and getting back to military strategy. <laughs> you know, they're not necessarily the same, right? Like there's an interest, like getting back to the way that entities, information technologies, militaries, geopoliticals, governments are strategizing against you. I was also thinking about the difference between getting back to pragmatism and getting back to psychoanalysis. You know, it's interesting how Lacan, if we just speak very generally, based the philosophical project on the real which is a kind of getting back to the actual. But it's interesting how that's kind of different from the actual of pragmatism or the concrete. Uh, and in a similar way, I think this point you're bringing up on, the, on how response, like what is responsibility, is structured by the information technology. That's an example of where I'm not sure if, if just kind of pragmatism would get you there. You have to be thinking about ways technology transforms the way you're toward the world and that you value things and stuff like that. And it is interesting to think now that we define responsibility in terms of responding. And how is that really an ability? I mean, we could talk about Ivan Illich's disablement, right, where technology disables us. So it's kind of funny because in this information technology, you're actually being disabled from doing different things. And yet that is what's now respondability. You're kind of made to out to feel like you have ability, but really all you're doing is responding to things. And mm -hmm. there's something funny, too, because responding is kind of passive, right? There can be, mm -hmm. be something kind of passive about responding. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's true. I mean, I think responding it's could go either way, right? It could sure, be sure, passive sure. or it could be like, you know, you're, you're actually maybe doing something. But yeah, responding itself is... You it know, puts it an emphasis on, on reaction. It yeah, puts an yeah, emphasis. Yeah, one hundred percent. And all of the social media, um, you know, and it's not to dog on them. You know, it's just that like the whole structure and the language that's used is like reactions, emojis. Like these are all these kind hmm. of emotive, hmm. reactive, you know, responses, responding, and um, it's kind of funny just listening to those words. Just like how it actually, I was like, because I was thinking about root words, and I was like, well, I wonder what that could be. Um, 
but it's like it makes me think of how it also sounds like respawning it's like just ah. it's a, it's interesting because i think <laughs> there is a lot of propagation in the mind that today's technology affords and that can be generative but it can also be genuinely paralytic <laughs> like it's very it's like you were saying when you t when you have this this mixture of like be feeling more responsible for everything that's going on in the world while you have less ability to do anything about it not because you're like less capable than 50 years ago you know 100 years ago but it's just that you literally you you are in a sense because you're being you're being kind of confronted with that which is so so far from you and mm. so and so like you know that it's it's like there's in a way you're like somehow it's all related but i don't i don't know how like I don't understand. I'm not sure what to do. Like, and you, but you feel so. You feel so respons. You feel so um, desiring to respond and to respond yeah. well and to, yeah. to do something and to change things. But that's the thing. Response, uh, responding at its in its nature is not action necessarily, right? It's it's like it's just it's you know it's kind of like the the idea of resounding, right? Like, <laughs> what is that? It's like just the gong that keeps going. You know. I'm not saying that sir. there's no place for that, but it's just that how much that's actually tied to action is not it's not inherent. Like it doesn't it doesn't give you that 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 like it's not clear well, how it's, much it, that is it, actually action or not. Well, well it's, it's funny because as you're talking, especially uh, given that we started praising this garlic ranch, um, good consumer report. There's a way where this entire ethic of I'm responsible to respond means that ethics favors providing your data, right? Like you're constantly giving consumer report, you're constantly providing information to these mm -hmm. social media. So it's very interesting because yeah, people know about people know about the idea that oh man, they're taking our data and addicting mm -hmm. us. But then there's also an ethical element here as well, where you're actually providing a lot of data and a lot of activity because you because you feel ethically compelled to respond no but that's where the thing is it's like it's literally a, a, a new form of like you're saying these this valuation and ethics about it this is the responsible thing to do yeah like to it, provide the responsible data thing to do is to give a public response to yes. some international crisis or yes. to to some you know or to respond to your friends for goodness sakes yeah. like of course you should and i'm not yeah. saying again there's nothing inherently and no wrong doubt the algorithm in terms of and no doubt the algorithm, sorry to interrupt, no, no doubt the algorithm calibrates relative to what you like, dislike, yeah. you know, you're reacting to your friends, but that easily sends information mm -hmm. on what to um, put before you, et cetera, so forth. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, it's like, it, it, you know, not, not inherently wrong to do these things, it's just, it just reveals a type of ethic, a new valuation, and how our, our concept of responsibility is, I think, is is linked or is influenced by by media technology and i think about response like you know it's funny because you know when you do like a, a crisis care for for patients or like emt stuff where it's yeah. like are they responding like as a patient uh, is there any response uh, like are there's this really kind of like critical nature to that in the sense of you know you were saying about the algorithm what why i'm saying all of this is because you know to get people's I mean, it has a, it is related to the attention economy, but people kind of take things like, oh, of course, I'm just being sold to all the time. So to get people to actually like want to see something or listen or, you know, pay attention right. to something or, you know, it's like it's it's the clickbait, it's the it's the catchy titles, it's the sort of like edgy stuff. Yeah. I guess what I mean to say is that this this it's both tied to like this ethical thing that seems to be cultivated through the medium technology. But then there's also this uh, element of, you know, kind of getting back to like the, I don't know how to put this, like the base impulses of, are you going to get, take the bait? Yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah. are you going to respond to the bait? Right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And so it also has this, the very, the hyper passive, I guess I'm just pink, like highlighting the hyper passivity of the, of the response well, ability. Well, bait only works if you don't think it's bait. So if it's an ethical matter or addiction, then it would work, right? Yeah. So they kind of have to almost position it as not bait, no. but you know, standing up for justice or something. Right, right. And I mean that it's funny because it's very, it seems very passive, but then suddenly it gets the fish going, right? Like yeah. the fish goes after it. And I think there's something about that that's interesting in the sense that respond, responding or response ability, 
I don't think it's meant to be this entirely because the word is still response or responding, but it's it does feel like it gets to more of that sort of frenetic energy of the reaction and reacting. No, I mean it's very interesting. And, it's, and, and I get like I think we can all feel it. Like I I think everybody has probably felt that sense too of like, oh someone hasn't responded. Then you start worrying yeah. like, oh yeah, yeah. did I do something wrong? Because they always usually yeah. heart the message, and then they don't, and then you're like, "Oh, they hate me." Well, you <laughs> which, see, which I know is so silly, but no, like, no, no, all those these are real, real things yeah. that people feel. Yeah. What is it, Miss Grace? Are the boys inside? Yeah. Oh, well, very are good. You painting your cool rock. Yeah. I love it. Your rock's very pretty. You are not responding to the dopamine addiction of the rock, Grace. You're painting it creatively. <laughs> <laughs> very well done. And they can't blend in with the us. Yes, well, that's what a good artist does. They restart, they return the the thing back to its source. Good job, Grace. Um, well, I won't be surprised when we get five thousand coupons for garlic ranch because the AI will yeah, hear this. It'll be like, us. well, buddy, we'll just get in the mail and everything. I know what you're going to respond to. Um, just dangle this. Little yeah, just dangle it. Well, you know, it's ranch. interesting too because yeah, I mean, on that idea of they didn't heart my message, so I guess we're not friends. I mean, you see all the therapy. I like so many of the therapy commercials are like, why didn't they get back to me? Do they not like me? Like that commercial goes a million times now, and it's like what, it's a for real like the better help. App yeah, or like all the better help. It's like. <sighs> They haven't gotten back to me. It's been three minutes, and uh, it's hard and too because what's interesting though is the is the is the response and the responding. Yes. starts to set precedence whether we it want sets to or not. Oh yeah, that's so very if important. if somebody does it's that not and then, so, then yeah. they, they change, you're like, well, I can't deny there's been a change here. They usually do this and now they're doing yes. that. Yes, Something that's must right. be different. It's, but you know, you always assume that you've done something wrong when maybe like they're late catching a bus or something. No, you it's know, too it's like, simplistic. It's yeah. too simplistic to simply say, oh, they need to get over it, although there's a bit of that um, in, in my what, curmudgeon like ways. About, yeah, because... Yeah. The, because there's also the fact that it's that there's patterns that there's you. patterns and then yeah sometimes they are upset and you know <laughs> yeah. if one out of 20 that's enough to get to your lizard like brain that, oh, going yeah, exactly. and then there's also the kind of like suddenly they cut off or you like technology is actively creating precedent i think it's a great word yeah. that you use and precedent in history and you're looking for, your brain is subconsciously looking for patterns and if something breaks the pattern you're off because yeah. in a way the lizard brain, which I always use from Seth Godin, is basically a pattern spotting. It basically looks for patterns to determine danger. Yeah. You know, so if yep. a pattern's broke, danger. You know, 100%. danger. Um, and so that gets integrated into the responding culture. Yeah. And then in a funny way, that's one of the reasons why I think responding and responsible gets blurred. Because you're responding to make sure there's not danger. Mm -hmm. And that feels responsible, right? 100%. 100%. 100% but that's the thing it, it's, it's a real it's a real ethic and a, and a real sort of um, sense of responsibility that is developed it's a genuine one I think yeah. on a psychological level you know yeah and 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 like and also like these things can really like they're consequential too mm -hmm. that maybe doesn't feel as consequential as like oops I dropped my the axe on my foot or something yeah. like that but like it's still consequential because you know, a lot of times people using internet spheres are, you know, trying to build relationships and, 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 and things like that. So then you're like, uh-oh, like the danger feels very real, you know? Yeah, well, and I mean, there's another issue here where for most of history, correspondence, especially regular correspondence, was tied to business, was much more business, professional yeah. bound. Like you would, you would, the only person you'd be talking back and forth to the whole day or talking yeah, would with be in such your regular, house. yeah, either in your house or your, your business yeah. partner or yeah. something like and, that. And so what's interesting or here is when you have, so, yeah, that's right. So when you have such regular connection and communication, there's a way in which there's a kind of business ethic, mm -hmm. that secretarianism that comes in mm -hmm. that that you kind of subconsciously think you need to do, and in, in some ways you do, right? But but then it's also um, in another way off, because in business there's it's very clear that yeah you need to respond. Yeah. There will be consequences. It's not like um, ambiguous. Yeah. In the social world, it's ambiguous. Yes. You know, You're not getting, sure if it matters, it doesn't matter. Yes, or... and that ambiguity causes a lot of the anxiety. You know, anxiety and, and mental issues really correspond and uh, with ambiguity. And so, like, yeah, in the business world, you'd be like, I need to reply. You know, this is clear. Like, th there's literally people waiting to <laughs> act. I mean, that's the other issue that's kind of interesting 
is regular responding to information is kind of separated from an act. Like one of the reasons you're regularly corresponding with people is to get the train going, is to get the project going. Now the project is the communication. (laughs) Yeah. And so there's an interesting kind of infinity to it. Oh, yeah. 100%. One hundred percent. Well, it's weird because, and I don't know. It would be interesting to explore this avenue with with you, because in a way, it sort of doesn't have an objective, really. I mean, beyond the the relation itself or the or the responding itself. Right. And so that makes me think a little bit about what we'll talk about with doing like the useless things or yeah. the pointless things. And so, in a way, I think like there could be great value in the, in these sure. types of relationships and and you know types of responding. Yeah. Right. But there's the there is the the risks. One being like um, the dopamine you get just from yeah. like notifications. Yeah. You yeah. know, from from actually somebody somebody said something yeah. to me. Like someone responded to me. That just desire to have like to be heard and seen and re, you know related to. So it's like. That's one of the risks, as well as you know, is it is it something that like that that that's always the kind of the weird gray zone I think with the response ability and the response, um, what do I want to say? Kind of a, it's the it's the frequency of it really, the, yeah. the, or the potential for it to be frequent, where you're like we're friends, right? Like like there's this weird t- place of of wanting feeling like de- developing certain things between people. But you're not seeing them in real life all the time. Now, it depends. We could talk in different categories here, you know. It could be like your mom or it could be, you know, somebody you've never met but talked to for years. Yeah. Um, So, it just... But all I'm trying to say is that it's not very clear. Like, what if, if, you know, there's sort of a sense of, like, you know, again, the patterns develop. So, then you think, okay, that's what, what, like, friends do, right? And so, then, if if something gets kind of... D- disjunct or like is not the way that friendship might look for you in the real life or whatever mm-hmm. um, or partnership or whatever collaboration then it's hard not to start to wonder like oh am, is this sort of some pattern I just assumed or something like that um, and, and what's like the right maybe I don't I don't like this term that much but you know what are the right expectations possibly um, so yeah I just think your point about this idea of that responding in a regular capacity and what it usually meant in the past versus today. Um, I, oh, right, my question. So this uselessness, right? Is there something to it? Like, is this is it all good? Is it is it both good and bad? Is it all bad? Like, what do you think? Yeah. Well, the uselessness is interesting because there's this idea that with the friendship, if since it's infinite and you care about the person, you should do infinite messages. How do you set a limit on it, yeah. right? Where there's a useless space, there's a lack of. There shouldn't be quantification. Which, in some respects, is very good because uselessness in the Benda sense, the Julian Benda sense, which we can associate with Piper's leisure, mm-hmm. an emphasis on quality over quantity. Right. Then you're free of quantity in the useless space, which, in some respects, is good. But actually, in another way, without a clear objective or a clear binding principle like business, then you can't quantify an end to the messaging. And in fact, if it's high quality messaging, which you would want your friends to feel, shouldn't you keep messaging and message and message and message? And so that creates a certain tension. Um, and 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 so like the useless, I mean, the useless space too. It only works if the people in it are able not to read into things. Like if you start reading into the amount of messaging, I think like infinite. Um, communication like this requires really of like you can't have this anxiety and yet the very nature of the creation of the value and virtue of responsibility equals response creates the anxiety Mm -hmm. like useless spaces only work with more of an attitude of leisure as Piper talks about but it becomes a certain there's a certain anxiety there so that's Mm -hmm. where Mm -hmm. useless space we, we should put it like this Useless spaces are completely necessary to avoid the way, the the reign of quantity, as some people call it. But a useless space can only be maintained if people can handle anxiety. Like, yeah. that's always the rub. Like, yeah. you're not going to be able to keep leisure if you can't handle anxiety and you're wondering what people think you're doing with your time. You won't keep democracy, as Tocqueville talks about, unless you can handle anxiety. Mm-hmm. And so, 
these kind of useless spaces, quote unquote, require being able to handle anxiety and yet the very ethic of which then has people use the space. Uh, I don't know if I want to say is designed to create anxiety, but does create anxiety. Yeah, I think that's like I think that's a good way to put it. Because the other thing too is that it's not as like not all uselessness is is that a word are the same, right? No, so no. the uselessness of I'm not trying to judge it or something, but like the uselessness of a Candy Crush is different than you know the uselessness of reading. Uh, Oscar Wilde plays or sure, something like that. Sure, you sure. Know? Like I'm not trying to I, I, I guess I'm just trying to say that now it's kind of particular because maybe maybe it's possible that for someone out there like the a, a sort of a useless sort of game or something like that could be as valuable to them as like you know doing uselessly reading things that aren't for your class like that sure. aren't assigned for a class so it's sure. it's difficult to say um on the particular level but i do think it's fair to say that not all uselessness or useless spaces are the same well it's neither good nor and it's also not necessarily good i mean and it's also not necessarily given like everything is contingent in yeah. the hegelian sense right like just because it's useless in the julian bender sense just because it's open and free does not mean it will necessarily prove good people could just use useless spaces to study to, be lazy, to be lazy or fall into nihilism or something right yeah. um but the key point is that the useless cannot be maintained without handling anxiety and i think this brings us Basically, the main problem with this conflation of responsible and response as ethic is it's an ethic that never requires, it's an ethic without discernment and judgment and decision, which then means it can't be an Aristotelian ethics. It has to be an ethics of quantification or just keeping it going. Like maybe, well, that maybe it's a deontological ethic, which is you mm -hmm. respond like deontology yeah. is kind of like it's you do it regardless the consequence yeah. like in Kant like you tell the truth no matter what even if it's to a Nazi asking yeah. about you know the location of Jews as a well, famous example yeah. yeah well it's funny to me that you were saying about like the useless space of like the the, the potentially infinite chat being not about quantity which I mm -hmm. think you're right about that but the odd thing is is like I wonder if it reveals our our comfort in quantity because yes. a lot of times it's a, it can be compared to Pat prior conversations because I don't know my mom and dad would even say like when we were back on landlines I mean this is landlines and yeah. and my my older sister liked to have phone calls you know yeah. like and my parents were like I don't understand like how could well, what do you possibly need to talk about for like three hours right yeah. you know like on a phone call because for them when they grew up yes. the phone call was you used explicitly for a message to yes. like that was necessary to communicate yes. and like it yeah. meant something it was time yes. to action yes and so it was very and like also your your phone was also the whole line for the street so like yeah. everyone else they they relied on you being quick or brief because somebody else might need to use it yes. for a call yes you know what i mean so it's just in that way i think that there's there's something about quantity that we like we end up having a propensity toward anyway or the infinite maybe right yes. like We'll, we'll, we'll gravitate toward that and we'll kind of think of that as better even though it's not determined by quantity in the same way because it's kind of it quote unquote useless space right well i mean you could say the major paradox that happens in the the infinite communication world is that it is a useless space because it's not tied to a clear use you know yeah. it's not a clear utility right which means it will only function as qualitative and yet if we lack the capacity to judge quality or to stand for quality or know what it is, we in a weird way judge the quality by the amount of quantity. We say it must be a good discussion because we respond a lot. Well, couldn't it just and, be like, 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 yeah, go ahead. And so yeah. that creates some law, that creates some pathologies. Like can, that in of itself like it creates the anxiety. But some people are like, well, but like judging it as such is like a type of valuation that only particular people could make. Well, I, I wouldn't judge it as such. I would say that's what you're toy. That's the fire you're toying with. Yeah. Like it's not, right. you know, only a given person can know. Well, but the the mm -hmm. mixture of the medium yeah. runs this risk. Right. It makes me think of when Jochen will talk about uh, is it Aristotle where he talks about the different types of, of of friendship. Yes. And how like there's the utilitary there's the, there's a u utility friendships there's like these different friendships. So the useless space of the the messaging with friendship could be like 
one of the the friendships that doesn't rely on utility, right? Which yeah, it could, it could be, be beautiful. Which means yeah, be beautiful, absolutely. Right. But you better know that. And you better be able to like make judgments and assessments. The yeah. issue is that in of itself requires some kind of philosophical training. Yeah. And the likelihood but, but that the... But it's like, why do we need to discern about that stuff? I guess for me, it's kind of like the thing is, is that it does end up making people have certain... For example, the paranoia of response or not responding or this person... Like that all kind of develops from not really taking some time to be thoughtful about those mediums, perhaps? Well, you have to be discerning and make judgments of what, at what point to stop whenever dealing with something potentially infinite. Yeah. Like... Because it, it won't set its own limits, right? It won't like set its thing. own limits. Yeah. And infinity is what creates anxiety. Like, the yeah. ever I guess whenever there's choice, there's some type of discerning, right? I mean, yes. That's... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so the issue is, like, if the ethic today is mostly one of response... Like, you're ethical to the degree you can maintain your responses or respond to events in the world or yeah. show your response. This is not one where you have to make judgments proportionally of what's fitting. Like, we talk all the time on the net about proportionate judgments. And this is where we start running into some real issues. I mean, we've, we've talked before, like, we, list, we exist in a transparency culture where yeah, basically yeah. showing and saying and stating everything is the right thing to do. Like... There's no notion that some things are better set, left unsaid. Okay. Sure. There's not a notion that some things are supposed to be private. It's really like very much a kind of transparency culture. And the more you make things transparent, the better. And that makes sense because if you don't make everything transparent, you're denying people something to respond to. Yeah. And if response is the ethic, mm -hmm. then the not making everything transparent means there's a lack of something by which to respond, right? Uh, and then also there's a mixture of the idea of, well, why wouldn't you make something transparent unless you're trying to hide something, right? And so yeah. there's also something about transparency and response that goes together. But yeah. if you instead say sometimes it's good to be transparent and sometimes it's not, well, now there's a judgment. There's a discernment. Mm -hmm. And basically real, like, Aristotelian ethics requires measure, yeah. and judgment and that's not there in response you know a response ethic yeah. you know there's just did you respond or not it's very binary right, right. but it's funny because a, a kind of subtle discernment still slips in right where it's like it's best to respond it's best yes. to show oh, yes. and I think too it's difficult because um, there's also the thought of like but isn't it courageous to respond I mean it's hard people might not agree with your position yep. and you're yeah, going to yeah respond to that global crisis whatever it is yeah. right and it's, that's where I think it's tricky and why I think there is a type of you know it's hard because it's like it's like we said it's both the thing that's you know potentially well, well it's the reign of deontology as yeah. Kant would say it's like it's it's good no matter what like it's it's uh right you can it's like it, do, it doesn't matter like it's good like well can we actually make a difference are we actually adding to the solution no you just should it's very interesting like we exist in an age is it just good or is it just relative well, response has gotten this kind of objectivity to yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. Um, to a degree, I think you, it's true. What you say in the response can be relative, but mm -hmm. do you respond or not is seen as, well, we, we don't, we're afraid of being passive, right? Like, oh, yeah. you're being passive if you don't respond. Uh, but really, that, that's, that's, there can be truth to that. But really, there's much more of a discernment, much more of a measurement that is not na necessarily captured in a... You almost want to say respond like deontological response ethic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I think the helpful thing about it is just, you know, it's interesting though because somebody hearing this might be like there could be a feeling of why say anything, why why write anything, why sure. whatever. But I do think there can be there are there can be distinctions in terms of, like the thing is is that we can't yeah, yeah, we can't yeah, yeah, not yeah. respond. We talked about this a little bit with philosophy, right? Like there's no way to really not respond in the sense you you. You, you're not responding as a type of response. You're kind of thrust in that, to that position by technology. If you don't use social media, you're not using it, right? And yeah. you're not, not having any relation to it. It's like you're not using it, right? Yeah, there's still an so, approach. Yeah. So I think that it's just... Well, you could almost... But I think, I think it's just tying to this idea of like... I think why it can be helpful to think about it, think about the concept of response and its relationship to responsibility is because... It might maybe make us slow down a little bit with what we and like what we end up adopting as like the the best thing to do or the right thing to do. Like you're saying, it relates to transparency because and honesty because then 
we just respond like responding and responding quickly is pretty much the, the supreme thing potentially yeah. right like so then well you can't really there's no time to think through oh should I really like say that or not with a and people always use a letter writing example right you actually have to sit and write your words out and realize oh wait I was really angry but now I've written this letter and I sort of feel like I worked through it you know and then you might decide not to send the letter you might still end up sending the letter but like just the, the mere the sheer process of how of you know the, the what it took to respond in the past as, as, as opposed to now changes a lot in terms of what starts to become thought of as like this the thing you should be doing right or whatever well I mean even if you outrightly say like I don't care yeah sure um, there's it there's a difference you could say between response in it the way that response in the way we're talking about it and mediation like there's a lot of response, but is there long-term mediation? You know, mm -hmm. we talk about the patience of the concept, mm -hmm. as Cadell talks about, right? Like one yeah. of the, yeah. you know, people conflate responding immediately with responding at all, mm -hmm. and really, what this critique of this kind of ethic of response, which is part of the perpetual mm -hmm. emergency, as Paul Virilio talks about, yeah. it, this quickness, this <laughs> speed, like the ethic, the on top, you know, there's this real like. Virilio thinks of himself as this real thinker of speed, and you can say, like, there's so much emphasis on speed, but really what we need is mediation, long-term conceptual mediation yeah. on topics, and yeah. that's kind of the sublation of response, mm -hmm. but you see, in a way, that's anti-transparency, though, because you don't show until it's done, right? You have, you have to hold and work and yeah. keep in the womb, if you will, until it's time to birth, yeah. and you're not, and if, that, and if transparency is seen as ethical, if you're yeah. holding in and thinking through, then you're not taking a stand. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're a bad guy or you're doing something wrong. And, right. And so that's kind of the I think issue. That's a great point. You know, yeah. mediation is great. Uh, but that's, that's not, but mediation is not good for business. Mediation is not good for uh, clicks, right? You know, they want, um, they want uh, response and haste in response. Um, and that, that's kind of a lot of the issue is yeah. so we, what we need is the patience of the concept, but there's a response ability you're seen as like, it's your responsibility to respond. And if you're mediating, you're not acting. And this is where it all gets so confusing yeah, because yeah, 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 response yeah. on social media is seen as action. That's what's kind of interesting that yeah. like that's action now. And mm -hmm. In the past, they I think they kind of laugh at you. It's almost like writing the letter is is the action. Mm -hmm. I wrote a letter to the government, so I did something. It's like, that's better than nothing, but it's interesting how we're so drunk on our screens and information mm -hmm. that response equals action. Mm -hmm. When it may not be passive, you may be putting your voice out mm -hmm. there, but it's not... Like it's not necessarily the same as action, like you were saying, getting your muscles mm -hmm. dirty, actually doing something. Yeah. So it's interesting how this ethic of responsibility mm -hmm. almost functions mm -hmm. to make us feel like we're more active than we are, 100%. if you will. Okay. Yeah, one hundred percent. But the garlic ranch is really good, <laughs> and highly um, recommend. Highly recommend uh, that our responsibility in responding to the garlic is <laughs> to tell you how great it is. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's some sort of deontological response now that's going on. Um, but well, I suppose... What's an ontological response versus the ontological? Well, ontological response would be encounter, surprise, yeah, limitation, yeah. and the ability yeah. to hold mediation. Like, yeah. if we start talking encounterology, uh, it would be accepting lack as opposed to responding in such a way to keep you uh, avoiding mm -hmm and um, not seeing lack. Yeah. I mean, that's another is you could say speed is how you avoid lack. Speed is this kind of way of never getting overly invested, uh, yeah. which uh, is weird because in an age of people who are not invested in topics enough to do long-term mediation, they're very reactive, which makes it seem like they're invested, but there's this interesting sort of um, simulation or simulacra mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of investment in the reaction. Yeah. That I think is the problem as well. Yeah. No, I agree. But we should, I suppose, clean these things up uh, <laughs> yes. and eat the rest of this ranch. But for yeah. more. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, the, for more by OG Rose. Please visit OGRose.com. Spotify. Spotify. 
pick up the new global brain. Yes, you know, there's logic lots of global global yep. brain. Well, I think global 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 Sci- you know, science of logic. Pick it up. It's amazing. Up. Wonderful entries. Can you yeah. say pick it up, Reed? Pick it up. Yeah, that's it. Best sales pitch ever. Your response to that should be buying. Thank you so much. <laughs> All the best. Bye bye.